this video we are going to look about antibiotic sensitivity test so in short it is AST what is this test it is an in vitro method to determine the effectiveness and the choice of antibiotics against a bacteria so if there is any bacterial infection we use antibiotics as a treatment so for choosing which antibiotic is effective and to determine the dosage of uh, antibiotic we use this antibiotic sensitivity test so this is the uh, common definition uh, clinical diagnosis lab we use this uh, antibiotic sensitivity test and for drug discovery also to uh, if you are finding a new antibiotic against some bacterial infections to test that uh, uh, efficiency we use this antibiotic sensitivity test so who discovered this AST is actually there are different type of uh, antibiotic sensitivity tests are there in which we discuss about a disc diffusion method uh, in this video so this the method was discovered by Kirby and Bayer so W Kirby and Bayer in 1950s so let's check what is the procedure to do this AST so first what are the materials required to do this uh, disc diffusion method or otherwise called as Kirby Mayer method or uh, the first is antibiotic disc so we need to uh, select which are the antibiotic uh, we are going to study and it will be in disc shape you can the picture you can see there are small discs which contain antibiotics second is 0.5 McFarlane standard so what is this 0.5 McFarlane standard it's very complicated you might be thinking but it's very simple in the picture you can see four test tubes are placed in that the first test tube is 0.5 McFarlane standards. Nothing much. Yeah, if uh, four test tubes are there, and you can see the turbidity is uh, uh, great increasing. So first tube is somewhat turbid, but mostly it is clear. You can see the lines behind very clearly. If you see like uh, the fourth tube, it is very turbid. You can't see the lines clearly. So it is a uh, three McFarlane standard. So you have to choose for this uh, test. You have to choose 0.5 McFarlane standard culture. Uh, we will be discussing about this uh, broth and uh, culture uh, while learning the procedure. Now we will just know we required a 0.5 McFarlane standard and how we achieve this 0. McFarlane standard is we incubate this bacterial culture for 18 to 24 hours not more than 24 hours or less than 18 hours so 18 to 24 hours is 0. 0.5 McFarlane standard and the third is Muller Hinton agar and Muller Hinton broth we need for this forceps to keep the uh, antibiotic disc in the agar plate and last final is sterile swabs which is required for swabbing our culture in the agar plate so these are the important materials required Coming to the procedure, first we have to select which bacteria we are going to use in this test. So if there is a bacterial infection, we have to isolate a bacteria from that infection and we will be growing it in a muller hinton broth. So we will be incubating it for 18 to 24 hours to achieve 0.5 McFarlane standard. Okay, so our culture is ready now. Second is to swap the bacterial culture uniformly all over the plate from the muller hinton broth to muller hinton agar. So we will be preparing a agar plate uh, containing muller in Tanagar in that we will be uh, swabbing our uh, bacterial culture using a sterile swab the second point is uh, uh, place the antibiotic disc in an evenly spaced manner so we have to space uh, keep our antibiotic disc different if you, if you want you are testing for three or four uh, uh, different antibiotics you can choose three different four antibiotic disc and pl place it in even uh, evenly spaced manner it should not be crowded like place, placing two three antibiotics disc nearby and uh, then it will mix together and we can't find the result properly so it has to be placed evenly sp spaced manner uh, at most you can keep around uh, four or five like very rare cases you can keep five antibiotics but generally people used to keep a four antibiotic disc in a agar plate incubate the plate at 37 degrees celsius for 16 to 24 hours so after placing the antibiotic disc we have to incubate it in the incubator in 37 degrees celsius for 16 to 24 hours finally after 24 after incubation we measure the zone of inhibition there will be a form of formation of zone of inhibition around the disc so bacteria will be dying and uh, will not grow uh, near the antibiotic disc so based on the zone of inhibition we will determine uh, which uh, antibiotic is effective and uh, uh, bacteria is resistant against which antibiotic this uh, stuff standard we will be getting no after uh, measuring the zone of inhibition so this is the general procedure so coming to the result part we will be measuring the diameter of the zone of inhibition so what is this zone of inhibition is nothing but there will be a circle of a zone uh, which will be around the uh, disc uh, antibiotic disc in which the bacteria won't be growing so in this picture you can see that yellow color is the bacterial growth near that uh, disc uh, there is no growth so there is a circle of uh, uh, zone there is a uh, no growth of bacteria so that is we call the zone of inhibition we will measure the diameter of that uh, zone of inhibition and we will 
will determine whether this uh, bacteria is resistant or susceptible to that uh, uh, antibiotic. There will be already there is a standard chart for each antibiotic. So if the diameter of uh, zone of inhibition is smaller than the required length, the bacteria is resistant to the antibiotic. If the diameter of the zone of inhibition is larger than the required length, bacteria is susceptible. So it is the concept we use in this. So coming to the advantages and disadvantages of this technique are it is uh, first we will discuss about the advantages it is very easy and reproducible method so in which whatever lab we, we just we required a petri plate and a muller intern agar and a disc and bacterial culture that's all so these with these uh, things we can recreate uh, this uh, experiment so it is easily reproducible and cost effective also it is not very high tech equipments or uh, uh, very laborsome process it is very easy and cost effective multi drugs multiple drugs can be tested simultaneously so as i said we can place around four to five antibiotic disc in the uh, petri plate so we can test multiple drugs against uh, the single bacteria coming to the disadvantages it is an in vitro test uh, so it is done under the lab not in a patient so uh, we can't be judging the effectiveness of a drug how it acts here like to the pa patient because in a patient there will be a lot of chemicals involved so it has to it, there will be a lot of dilutions but in the lab it will be showing higher results so we have we, we can't be sure how it will be act this test cannot be used to, for intrinsic resistant organisms for example protease and all it will be a generally resistant to nitrocycline antibiotics so uh, we can't uh, be selecting uh, uh, protease species and giving anti tetracycline antibiotic and we should not say it, it is not working so uh, these are all generally resistant to this kind of antibiotic we have to know these basic things so that uh, uh, we can't be using all the antibiotics against all bacteria so choice of antibiotic should be appropriate based on the choice of uh, bacteria we are using so based on the bacterial infection we have to choose which antibiotic uh, uh, will be effective these are the drawbacks of this antibiotic sensitivity test so at last in this video we learned about antibiotic susceptibility test or sensitivity test so its introduction what are the materials required and uh, what is the procedure how to do it and uh, how to interpret the result prior to observation and uh, finally advantages and disadvantages so all the general uh, things about uh, antibiotic susceptibility test is discussed that's all